I think one of the hardest things for me uh, outside of losing Tony was the recognition that money is a powerful motivator. When you look at pictures of Tony Shea, it's one of my favorite photos of the two of us. There's often a long red beard right there too. You were his employee. Yes. Yeah. And you became a very good friend. Yeah, through the years, yes. Tyler Williams first met his boss as a customer service agent at Zappos in 2011. He would leave the company a decade later as director of brand experience, but his real role was friend. It was inspirational. It was, let's solve real world problems. Let's, let's help make a better place for people to work and live. But by late 2019, the methodical multimillionaire was marching toward disaster. In the conversations that I was having with him, it was like I couldn't pull him back into reality. Um, it was super scary. That reality clouded by ketamine an anesthetic causing hallucinations. Friends say Shea began snorting the powder, and by early 2020, he was living here in Park City, Utah. Those in and around his inner circle coming to Williams about what they saw. And I think generally most people were concerned about his reputation around that time. Shea entered rehab in Utah that February. Documents the 80s Now investigators reviewed show doctors said he was manic and delusional. Shea believed ketamine was, quote, expanding his cognitive, physical, and spiritual capabilities, including his ability to grow two inches. After a two-week stay, Shea asked Williams for a list of his concerning behavior. When he was saying these things to you, what was going through your mind? It's the compounding effect of one of those things might be, okay, you think you can run a marathon without training, but it's all of those things combined of, I'm transcending human consciousness, I can see the matrix, I can grow myself with just my brain, um, I, I don't need, um, I can heal people, you know, these types of things that he was saying all combined just definitely set off every alarm inside of me that um, my friend's not okay. Shea stayed secluded in Park City at the start of the COVID pandemic. Friends say he believed he could recycle his urine and manifest water. Is it fair to say the Tony Shea you knew when you were working with him in Zappos and the Tony Shea you saw in Park City were different people? Complete opposite of each other. The turning point for Williams came on a bus trip that June. And he walks on the bus in his underwear with like a box of crayons and post-it notes. At what point did you realize the emperor had no clothes? That bus trip where he had a complete psychotic break right in front of his friends, um, we all knew in that moment he's not just not okay, he's completely out of his mind. Friends found Shay in the bus's bathroom, spreading feces on himself in an attempt to, quote, reabsorb minerals. Once back in Park City, Shay flooded his home and held two women hostage until officers took him to the hospital. There, an emergency room physician diagnosed him with a, quote, altered mental status. Writing officers felt that they needed to bring him directly to the emergency department to get the additional help because they did not feel like he was safe at home taking care of himself and his altered state. Some people were calling him, he's in a funk. You know, he's just depressed or he's, he needs something that'll pull him out of this depression or the self-destructive behavior. And then you had a new group of people that were forming that we're really interested in the financial gains. Williams later sent a text message to the person he believed was supplying Shea with ketamine in an attempt to stop the flow. And I said, hey, please don't, whatever you do, Tony is in, you know, just had a psychotic break. Um, please don't give him ketamine, whatever you do, don't give him ketamine. That person showed Tony that text message. Shea then responded, cutting him off. And do you remember what that text said? Yeah. When you started talking about me behind my back. The message goes on for several minutes, an incoherent stream of consciousness that then. You are all back from Montana for a trip that I paid for half of you. Was silenced. Hundreds of people that used to uh, talk to me regularly on a regular basis. When Tony told them that I was no longer to be communicated with, um, just immediately stopped talking to me. 
immediately. By summer 2020, Tony Shea's drug of choice was nitrous oxide, also called Whippets. He conducted business meetings in his bed, notes scribbled on his body. Documents the ADU's now investigators obtained say Shea wanted his Park City ranch to become a so-called Disneyland 2.0, where customers would pay in seashells and he would collect every hot air balloon in the world. He bought a property around his home, created this natural outside dishwasher, and offered a person a million dollars to be a tour guide on this pond. Tony used to always say, if you had a magic wand and anything were possible, and regulations or resources weren't a problem, what would you do? And so, yes, we thought about big ideas. Then those ideas would go into a processing system around him that people who were rational and could tell him that we looked into this, this doesn't make sense, here's why, none of those people were left. That August, Park City Police responded to Shay's home for a welfare check. Police met him at the front door and soon left, with an officer writing, he appeared to be in good health from what I could tell. By summer, this was Tony Shay. Doesn't even look like him. Hundreds of tiny canisters surrounding the entrepreneur. He was going through one every five to ten minutes. Shay's friend, singer Jewel, and her business manager stayed with Tony in mid-August. They took these photos. I don't even recognize this person's emaciated. By mid-September, this was Tony Shay. One person slipping him notes like this. Does Tony approve? A check mark next to why or yes in a multi-million dollar real estate deal. Documents say that year, Shea acquired nearly 90 million in real estate assets, not including the former Zappos headquarters, which he bought for $70 million, a figure lawyers for his estate say was 30 million over its value. They got this far because instead of his community rallying to try to work together in love to save a friend, the community fractured into different groups of people that had different interests in mind. The group of people that were around him when he was like this didn't have his best interests at heart. In late October, someone in Shay's inner circle consulted a doctor about having him committed. We have uh, one victim be a pull from the fire now and responsive. But it was too late. Weeks later, Shay would sleep alone in this shed with a propane tank, blanket, and candles. He would catch fire dying from his injuries a week later. As much as Tony invested into his community and into systems that fostered connection and those type of things, when he needed his community the most, when he needed society the most to help him, it just wasn't, it wasn't there.